Hey, mushroom nerds, it's Anna McHugh. I want to talk to you about a beautiful mushroom that's fairly common in the southeastern U.S. It is called Amanita subcocari. And as you can see, it's sort of a buff colored mushroom with uh, scales on the top. And I'll get into the identification features specifically in a moment. This is not known to be an edible mushroom, at least as far as the resources I've seen. And, uh, you know, it does have a sort of unusual and pleasant aroma at times. And so for instance, like today, uh, I collected this mushroom yesterday and it had no odor, but now it has a sort of sweet, um, burnt brown sugar is the way that it's described in some of the Amanita books and other guidebooks that I rely on. Anyway, so, you know, this mushroom is, um, potentially may seem appetizing if you're out in the forest, but, uh, I would, uh, definitely, in, you know, encourage you to steer clear of that, as well as, you know, many other mushrooms in the Amanita genus. Like, if you start to dig into the resources, it can become clear really quickly that many of these species, no one's tested them for their toxicity. And uh, because there are some very, very dangerous mushrooms in the Amanita genus, it is uh, important to sort of recognize what they are and also proceed with caution if you want to consume the ones that are edible. Okay, so let's talk about Amanita subcocari. There is a larger relative of this called Amanita cocori that is pretty common I guess it, well, it, it is more common in the Northeast from what I understand and what I've read. And it is a larger version essentially of this mushroom, except it has uh, some differences in the base. And so a lot of Amanita mushrooms, instead of having like a cup of tissue, which is often a sort of iconic feature of some of the dangerous Amanitas, a lot of them have these bulbous things that have, uh, you know, vertical splits in them. And so this looks very similar to some very foul smelling mushrooms in uh, the Lepidella section of the Amanita genus. And I um, talked about Amanita ravenelli a couple days ago, and that's like a uh, a mushroom that essentially smells like a peed in pool. And so, but it has a lot of the same features. So if you approach this mushroom, you're like, it has this bulbous base with the splits. And uh, one of the things that makes Amanita subcocari different from these other mushrooms is you get a dark red wine kind of mahogany staining in these splits and damage areas. All right, other things that make this one a beautiful, beautiful mushroom, uh, you have a ring on the stem and it's actually sort of a double ring. It's pretty durable as well. And it just is beautiful and elaborate. A lot of Amanita rings are either delicate and fall off or if they're membered, it's, they're fairly like simple. I wanna show you um, <clears throat> a specimen that shows even more of this sort of elaborate upper stem action. So uh, not only do you have this ring, which is very, very big, and as you can see, is really a couple layers. You also have these beautiful sort of recurved bits of the mushroom flesh that have sort of uh, started to, you know, curve up the stem. All right, so let's talk about the cap. There are a lot of mushrooms and those foul smelling ones I was talking about, uh, Amanita ravenelli or the uh, pine cone mushroom, they have a very similar sort of warty surface. And these warts are actually pretty durable. Now I say that because there are a lot of Amanitas that have warts and they just slough right off. You can touch them and they poof evaporate. Or even, you know, if you look at them wrong, they'll just uh, sort of go away. But in the case of Amanita subcocari and a lot of other Amanitas that are sort of genetically adjacent, they have these pyramidal warts that are actually pretty durable and they look more scale-like than wart-like. So that's really helpful for, uh, you know, this species and others that are similar and may not have a pleasant aroma so much. All right, underneath you have uh, a partial veil. Uh, that's at least bits of it, and that turns into this elaborate ring. You also, um, let's see if it's still here, there is a little bit of tissue that often clings to the outside, like the outside perimeter of the cap. And that's called appendiculate, is the mycology word for that uh, particular um, 
phenomenon of uh, the rim of the cap having this sort of floofy material. All right, and I also wanna finish up by showing a baby of this mushroom. So this was growing uh, sort of adjacent to that pair of mushrooms that I showed you. And as you can see, this is why um, the uh, pine cone Amanita gets its common name is when it's a baby, you have what is gonna turn into a pretty big cap, but that bulb is already like forming up and looking a little bit like a, a turnip. I wanna turn it around also to emphasize that when you're collecting mushrooms like puffballs, you want to be very careful to see uh, and, you know, bisect a mushroom to see if there's sort of any miniature mushroom forming inside. You'll sometimes see like rudimentary gills. In this case, it's really clear. And already you have a little bit of this reddish staining and you can see a little bit of those, uh, you know, what you see here, the fluffiness, as soon as the mushroom pops open, you're going to end up with these uh, beautiful sort of brown tipped scales. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, everything I have for you, except for the fact that like, I deeply appreciate people's help identifying this mushroom on the internet. It uh, is really rewarding to try to identify a mushroom that you've never seen before, but I really screwed it up. I thought this was a far more common thing uh, called Amanita canescens, and that one's really cool. But uh, you know, I was hesitant to call this Amanita subcocori because I'd never found it, and I didn't want to engage in too much wish wishful thinking. So uh, anyway, you know, I hope you find a billion mushrooms. Another thing, I guess I'll end with this kind of mushrooms, so the Lepidella section of the Amanita genus. Uh, a lot of them, at least where I live in Raleigh, flourish or are able to fruit and get kind of big in really dry conditions. And so we haven't had a good rain in probably two weeks. But when it comes to larger mushrooms or even mushrooms that like last more than 14 minutes, uh, these Lepidella mushrooms seem to really do their thing uh, a lot more readily. They are not abundant, so that sort of like reinforces my excitement about this, especially because that brown sugar aroma was so absent yesterday and now it is kind of over pungent and not, not great. Uh, if you look in, there's a book called Amanitas of North America, and I really enjoy it. Um, and there is a description of the smell of this, which is neutral, fungoid, cedar, and brown, uh, and or burnt brown sugar. Uh, and sometimes unpleasant. So I've got, you know, one of the uh, several sort of aroma profiles of this fascinating and beautiful mushroom species. Anyway, take the best of care. I hope we get to talk again soon and find a billion mushrooms in the meantime.